Greetings to all the people watching and listening to this episode of Jezuba Talks. I'm Tej and I quote Machona when I say, knowing what to say is sense, when to say it is intelligence, how to say it is wisdom, why and how to say it is enlightenment. The first Urban Debate League started in Detroit in 1984. Since then, Urban Debate Leagues expanded to 22 major US states. It's a no-brainer that debate engages students and delivers significant educational benefits. However, debate is a valuable education opportunity that not every child has available. The Portland Urban Debate League does just that. Provide the most resources to the poorest schools first. To understand more, let us talk to Mallory Copeland, Executive Director of Portland Urban Debate League. Welcome, Mallory. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. This is such a fun opportunity. Uh, Mal is a queer, non-binary cancers debater who moved to Portland in 2018 to attend law school. After meeting other debaters at law school, Mal was recruited to join Portland Urban Debate League's board. And by spring of 2021, Mal was serving as the interim executive director. They found a community to, in debate. And when they moved to Portland, they knew no one had no idea what law school would hold, but they had set up a debate coaching position at Lincoln High School, which grounded them through the arduous law school experience and working with students gave them hope for the future. That is wonderful. Uh, Mallory, let me begin by asking you, what got you into debating? Um, one of my friends that I had in my neighborhood growing up joined debates a year ahead of me. Uh -huh. She was a freshman in high school while I was still in eighth grade. And I remember her writing me a letter trying to convince me to join debate. She'd found that doing that activity had made her so much more confident, had made her better at public speaking. And she was the one who really encouraged me to join. And our first semester of doing debate, we were actually debate partners together, um, which was a lot of fun. Nice. I got to spend a lot of time with my best friends. Yeah, it was great. How beautiful. And you are uh, giving the credit to this friend of yours. And I hope she's listening to this. <laughs> I'll make sure I send it her way. It's been it's been quite some time since we've chatted, but I, I wonder if she'll remember that she's the one that got me involved. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, so tell me, Mallory, uh, what programs do you run and how often is the duration? Uh, how frequent is it? Yeah, so at Portland Urban Debate League, we're currently serving six high schools. Um, many of them are in the Portland Public Schools District, but we serve some outside of that as well. Most of our programs meet about once a week. We have two of our programs who are, who've been set up since the beginning. So since about like 2019. So they have a lot more longevity um, than our current programs. So they have classes at their schools that the students can attend and sign up for to learn about debate. Um, but for the most part, our programs meet like once a week after school. Um, one of the programs I coach personally meets before school on Wednesdays, um, which is an interesting trek for me across town. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, they we have practices about once a week. They usually last a few hours. Um, the students who have debate class um, usually see their teacher a couple times a week to learn about debate and. Yeah, it's um, a lot of differences across the different high schools. That's lovely. And you enjoy it. I'm sure you enjoy uh, this conversation and the debating and the, the entire preparation part of it. When you talk about preparation, when you are presenting your uh, course, what, are this, what is the preparation that you require? Mm, quite a lot, actually. Each year we choose, um, like the nation chooses the debate topic for the coming year for policy debate. Um, every school gets a vote and then it's tallied up by state, I believe. Um, so that topic gets announced early in the year. Um, I think it was just announced in January for this upcoming fall and next spring's topic. And Starting at the end of the school year, around May, I'll have to start doing research into all aspects of that new topic. Um, so that way I can coach a debate camp during the summer and teach the students about it. 
and um, you know, facilitate getting speakers to come in who specialize in certain areas of the topic. So for instance, this year, the debate topic is that the United States federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation with NATO in the area of biotechnology, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity. So a very intense topic to come into not yes. really knowing anything about those three areas. Exactly. Yeah, it's taken quite a bit of research to even wrap my head around all the different options that the United States and NATO have together. Wow, it must be requiring hours of preparation. Yeah, absolutely. So, it takes so much time. It does. And uh, when you talk, when you teach the students to uh, talk about this, uh, these topics, research them, do you also teach researching skills or is it just basically just Google it? Yes, we really focus on researching skills and research ethics. So the way that we present evidence in debate is by reading something like a one-liner that summarizes what the evidence is going to say. We cite the author and the date, and then we read out sections of an article that support our arguments that we're making. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching students to try and figure out what evidence is good evidence, we talk about what, what it means to have things to be peer reviewed, what it means to have good authorship. So the difference between a blog piece versus something that was um, like published in a major news source obvious have, obviously have differences in how we should evaluate those authors. Um, the students themselves will, in debate rounds, point out whether or not the authors the other teams are reading are um, viable, whether they have like, any problems in their publications in the past, whether mm -hmm. their research is supported. Um, so yeah, a lot of focus is on whether or not the people that we are presenting evidence from are good authors, reliable, writing beyond right. just like blog spot opinions. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, true, true. And uh, the students are very receptive. Do you have students who have been forced into learning, uh, you know, going for a debate class? Or do you have people who are genuinely interested in debating? I have had a mix over my time period of coaching. So when I still coached back in Kansas, there was mostly a debate class where students were signed up by their parents. Yeah, in some I know. Cases. I know. Their parents really wanted them to be good public speakers and thought debate would be right. worthwhile for them. Um, but for the most part here in Portland, all of it is before or after school. So the kids that show up really want to be there. Um, oh, that's good to know. My, yeah, many of my students, they show up week after week. They don't get any credit for it. They don't get you know anything beyond just like learning about it and being able to go to competitions. So that's really heartwarming to see. It's nice to see their passion. Yeah, that speaks a lot about uh, the passion for, for the teacher as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's take a break to understand what Jazuba is. Everyone at some point ponders on how this beautiful life can be made more meaningful. Maybe you're a leader trying to enhance your employee's experience at your organization or you already work for the community and seek volunteers with state-of-the-art skills to strengthen your nonprofit. Whatever your situation, know that you can make a difference. Chizuba began with this very vision, a vision to facilitate every skill and every passion in the world in meeting a social need. Corporate volunteering has several benefits for both businesses and organizations. In parallel, Experienced and enthusiastic volunteers join NGO workers, enabling them to serve the community more effectively. Jazuba offers everyone looking to add purpose and meaning to their lives a chance to connect or volunteer virtually with non-profit organizations from over 100 countries around the world. Visit www.chizuba.net and explore opportunities to find meaning. Chizuba your platform to do good. And now, back with our guest. Uh, so, Melody, tell me, what do you think is the best age to start with debating? Mm. I think that I haven't done enough research into middle school programs, but that's something we're hoping to do in the future. 
I think that starting students off in middle school learning about how to structure an argument, the differences between, you know, somebody making a plea towards someone's emotions versus one based in fact. I think that's something that you can learn at a, a young age. Um, it's probably something we're doing in our English language arts classes mm -hmm. since elementary school. Yes. Um, but I think structured debates probably work best in middle school and high school. Um, just because I think that as they get older, there's a better understanding of, you know, in debates, you have to have, you have to be on the pro side and you have to be on the con side. Um, at each, at any given moment, you'll have to support the other side. So Sweet I think geez. that, yeah, for the high schoolers and middle schoolers, there is a more, a better understanding of we are being forced to take a side that we don't necessarily agree with. So there okay. isn't like heightened emotions towards having to support that side. They, they, objectively understand, you know, that these are not always their own personal opinions, but they have to do research into those sides. Interestingly, because I, I was teaching earlier and I did coach a few students in uh, debating and uh, we won quite a few debates, uh, but there are different styles of debate, right? Uh, one mm -hmm. is the impromptu one, one is where you get the topic an hour earlier, one is the topic where you have a team and you need to have a good understanding between the team. Could you just tell us the kinds of debate that you are coaching? Yeah. So with the Portland Urban Debate League, we teach um, exclusively policy debate. So mm -hmm. it is a team debate between one person and their partner versus another team of two. We have, like I said, a topic that spans the entire year. It does not change. Um, and the students have to be affirmative or negative um, at any given debate tournament. They will probably have an even amount of debate rounds where they are affirmative and supporting the resolution in some way by proposing a plan text that falls under security cooperation with NATO in one of the three areas. Um, for my students, that looks like talking about banning lethal autonomous weapons, which are, are a form of artificial intelligence, um, like killer robots is the colloquial term that we've been using for them. Um, we talk a lot about vaccine research, increasing funding for vaccine research, um, banning offensive cyber weapons and banning germline genetic engineering are pretty much the four areas they talk about all year. So. When they're affirmative, they propose one of those plans. And when they're negative, they have to say why that won't work, why there's a better way to solve the problem, or you know, talk about the way the affirmative presents the plan um, could be based in um, like theoretical problems, such as like it increases US colonialism. It's like emboldens NATO to take more actions against um, countries like Russia and that, why that would be bad. So they're about an hour and a half long because we present so much evidence in the debate rounds and each student speaks twice. They will give one constructive speech and one rebuttal speech uh, in each debate round. So it gives them all a chance to be the person presenting evidence and to be the person analyzing that evidence and convincing the judge at the back of the room why they should win the debate round based off of the arguments that have been presented. Yeah. And who are your judges? Are these your the seniors who are the judges, or do you have a separate, you know, panel of judges? We have a lot of great volunteers. Um, they've truly kept this organization running because we've had triple the amount of students this year than we've had in the past. So our volunteers showing Yay. up and judging our debate <laughs> tournaments, the only way we've made it. Um, but for the most part, it's local professionals, former debaters. We have partnered with two local colleges, Lewis and Clark College and Whitman College. Mm -hmm. And both of these schools um, have sent their college age students to judge debate rounds for us. Lovely. So yeah, it's a great way for the high school debaters to see what college debate can look like um, and get the expertise from people who you know, have gotten scholarship money to debates. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, volunteers, mostly not, we usually don't have students, but if we end up opening a middle school program, we'll have the high school students judging the middle school students. Yeah. 
so on the same note, uh, do you have, do you feel uh, today people are reading the news less because it's so easy to access, right? You just have these notifications on your phone and you get um, the highlights of what is happening around. Twitter is there, of course. But the habit of reading and understanding a certain, like in the newspapers, you have the editorial section where there is debate, where there is, uh, they, they put across a point, you know, giving both sides uh, of the view. Do you think that has reduced today? Oh, absolutely. Um you know, my students are very intelligent. I wouldn't say they don't read the news, but they're, I would say that there is like a good mix of students who are not reading the news in the same way that I think that I had to do in high school debate to keep up with what was going on. And I think even myself, like I don't read the news the same way that I have in the past. It's been, you know, a switch to listening to podcasts. Yeah. Um, for, for a long time, a lot of my, the best news I got was on Twitter, um, but I've since stepped away from Twitter since the new Twitter owner. Um, but, <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> but when you say, uh, you know, when these are these short spurts of information, they are just a few characters long, they don't really give you both sides of the argument. So to have a perspective like that, it is very important that people read. Mm. Yes, right. absolutely. And, uh, uh, the habit of reading has to be inculcated from a very young age. And uh, do you see a program where you encourage reading like that? Oh, absolutely. Many of the times, I mean, across all debate students I've coached, it, there's so much to be reading for debate that, they, that it is imperative for them. They have to do it in order to understand their arguments. Um, Sometimes with newer debaters, they don't quite understand like the necessity of reading, you know, even in between the lines. We, yeah. the way we present evidence is like yes, certain yes. parts are underlined, certain parts are highlighted. Um, and then the rest is like just unformatted eight point font. Mm -hmm. So teaching the students, like you have to read what isn't being said out loud as well, yes. because we have research ethics, but that doesn't mean that hidden amongst what the other team is reading out loud isn't also like something that can help you in your side of the debate. Like maybe they're talking about this X, Y, Z is important, but in the un underlined sections, it's talking about here are these other eight things that would have to happen first. Yeah, yeah. So definitely imperative in debate that they read and learn both sides. I mean, they're, they're forced to learn both sides of each argument because they have to be affirmative and negative. Um, it's very fun to listen to them come back from debate rounds and be like, this negative argument that I just heard is so good. Like, we're going to have to prep against this so hard, but <laughs> yeah. also we're going to use this in our next negative debate round because it will help us yeah. win. Like, it will be our ace in the hole for this debate round. Always debating uh, and this entire atmosphere is filled with this energy, right? It's, it's you know, it's throbbing with a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, emotions also. Uh, it, it's fun. It's fun to also, um, Mallory, tell me now, do you also believe that uh, teachers uh, benefit from their participation in, in coaching and in teaching debate? Oh, yeah. I feel honored to be able to teach high school students still. It's been nine years of coaching and that old teacher cliche of like, the, te the kids are teaching me just as much as I'm teaching them. Yeah. That, that definitely holds true. I love having these like intellectual discussions with high school students, you know, especially with, you know, the state of the world, everything that's going on. It's nice to engage with young people who care so much about learning. Yeah. They care so much about expanding their horizons, um, like advocating for change in their communities. It's really beautiful to see with high school students. Um, yeah, they teach me so much all the time and it's great having, learning their perspectives about, you know, like what they're learning in high school science class and how that connects to what we're talking about. Things that I wouldn't have connected on my own, they do that for me. Yeah, yeah. and also I think uh, learning to be very patient, I think that that is also a big uh, learning, <laughs> listening <laughs> to both sides. Uh, yes, yeah. Mallory. How uh, how do you fund these programs? 
where, where does the funding come from? Um, we have a mix of funding. So a lot of our funding comes from grants that we um, apply to, talked about our, you know, needs for money, such as like food and transportation and mm -hmm. custodial fees at schools. Um, we also have a great donor base of former debaters, people that are in politics in the city who believe in this program and see the necessity of making sure students have access to extracurriculars, especially ones that will help them in other areas of their life in like their English classes and their college applications. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of good donors, grant funding. We have some, you know, contracts with our schools that allow <clears throat> for, um, when we send people to be coaches at schools that the schools pay us back for that time and energy too. So it's worked out, it's worked out very well. Lovely. And uh, what are the future plans? Do you plan to add some aspect to the teaching of debate? Yeah, there's um, quite a few different pieces moving right now. Um, we just made our two to three year strategic plan. So one of the hopes is to get grant funding to start a middle school program. Okay. Um, there are quite a few middle schools that feed into our high school programs that also struggle from the same um, lack of, act of extracurricular activities that's still majority marginalized student populations um, who would benefit from having more opportunities and access. Um, so we're hoping to start finding a middle school that would be a good fit, finding a teacher who wants to take over that program, and then adding that into our tournament schedule. And I think it'd be a great way for our high school students to be able to mentor middle schoolers. And also the high school students who are in debate rounds, they don't realize until they actually play the part of the judge, like mm -hmm. what exactly is going into the mind of somebody who is evaluating arguments. So I'm a very strong proponent of students who are in debate should judge debate rounds at mm -hmm. the lower level or like among their peers, hear what, like watch a debate round and hear what the actual judge has to say, mm -hmm. because that form of evaluation will help them evaluate their own arguments better. Mm -hmm. um, so very excited about middle school expansion. We're sticking with our same six high schools right now because we we're still trying to find coaches for a few of them as we move forward but yeah it's going to be a very exciting next couple of years i really hope we manage to move into middle school debate i'm sure uh, uh, just talking about uh, when i was earlier in a school environment we had an exchange program between a danish school and our school and we also had an a virtual debate so where pe people used to be debating virtually, you give the topic well in advance and give them time to prepare. And so do you have any such plans where you connect with students across the world? Um, we currently don't have um, plans for, oh, sorry. I never know how to turn off the email notifications. Um, <laughs> We don't have plans to do anything international quite yet. I think that's a bit beyond our our bounds of, um, it's just me. I mean, it's me and our board chair and our board is supportive, um, but I'm the only person on staff. So every new project is something that generally falls into um, something that I will be spearheading with the help ah, of our okay. board chair and board. But I, ideally that would happen down the line for Portland Urban Debate. Um, right now, the the broadest we've gotten is they get to compete at a, nas a national tournament um, in the spring. We're having our national qualifier this weekend, actually tomorrow. And then the winners, the top two teams from that will go on to Dallas at the end of March. So they'll be able to compete against schools for across the nation and I don't know if there are any international schools quite yet, but I'm sure the students would love for that to be an opportunity the, I just, in the future. I just put the thought out there. You could think of it. I would later. love to do that. Yeah. Oh, we would love to do that. It just brings a different perspective, you know, when you 
you know, you speak to oh, different absolutely. people from different cultures and how that is perceived. Um, it's a, an entirely new uh, area. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, lovely talking to you, Mallory, and uh, wonderful. You're doing great work. I'm sure you're enjoying it, and I'm sure your students are enjoying it as well. And uh, all the best for your future projects. Thank you so much. This has been this has been lovely. I love talking about debate any chance I get, especially my students. So, thank you so much for having me on. Wonderful. Thank you, people out there listening and watching to this. It was it was lovely talking to Mallory and the Debate Club, and uh, see you all again in the next episode. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>